Hello, 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 and welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, my name is Matt. Love, uh, I'm going to be introducing this show. And yes, just first of all, I will say it is very obvious I forgot my AIE shirt today. Thank you so much for Paul and Alyssa for making me look bad. <laughs> um, but welcome, everybody. Um, tonight, we're going to be going through a vet in schools live stream. Um, so I have two guests here with me, uh, or AIE staff, I should say. <laughs> um, but uh, first of all, I'll introduce Alyssa uh, Taylor, our event officer from Adelaide. Welcome, Alyssa. Hello, thank you. And tonight, uh, Alyssa and I will be joined by Paul, who is one of our screen and media instructors here hello, as well. Hello. So welcome, Paul. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That's all right. Uh, so tonight we'll be going through Vet in Schools information. So um, for those that are first hearing of this or are a little bit unsure of what that is, talking about our Certificate 2s and Certificate 3s uh, and how you can pair them with your study in high school. So for years 10, 11 and 12. Uh, and it is a really awesome way to learn this basic skills. Uh, and especially in what we're going to be talking about tonight is screen and media. So our Game Art Foundations uh, Certificate course. So if, hopefully we've got a few artists listening out there that um, are tuning in. Uh, and can uh, hear a few different areas that they'll be looking at when going through this course. So enough from me. The last thing I'll mention before passing it over to the two is if anyone has any questions tonight throughout the live stream, please feel free to chuck them in the chat, uh, either on our website, YouTube or Facebook, and we will pop them up on screen and get them answered for you. Awesome. Uh, hey. Thanks so much, everyone. I'll pass over to Alyssa. Take it away. Thank you. All right, thanks for joining us, Paul. Um, I guess a little bit of an introduction about um, the screen and media, um, which you teach. So it is yes. a Cert 3. Um, it runs for a year long. Um, and its actual name as well is Game Art Foundations. Yes. Um, I guess yeah. to kick us off, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oof, um, well, uh, let's see. Um, obviously, yes, I'm, a, I'm one of the uh, Game Art Foundations teachers. Uh, there is a, a few of us. Um, it's a quite a big course for um, in our in what we deliver for the certs, uh, what we offer. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, that's you know generally what I do. Um, I also uh, am an assessor, so I, I do all the marking as well, which is always a lot of fun, um, as you can as you can probably imagine if there's any teachers out there. Um, yeah, so um, out out of work. Um, I um, unfortunately I don't do too much. Um, I have a uh, I have a a four year old daughter, so she takes up basically all of my time. Um, you know, when she's not taking up my time, I try to game a little bit. Um, <laughs> you know, as much as I can. You know, I get in maybe an hour or two a week, and then I also like to play uh, golf and um, and make some short films with uh, one of my friends. Sort of a, oh. one of the hobbies I have. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, and what experience did you have uh, with screen and media? With screen and media, um, I guess before coming on with AIE and teaching it. Mm, so um, I didn't have any sort of formal experience in game creation. Um, I've, I, like I mentioned previously, I have made uh, a few comedy short films uh, from start to finish, um, and also I had quite a long running podcast in that sort of uh, area too in the film creation area. Um, I started working here and basically got offered the opportunity and took it, you know. So it's, yeah, yeah, and it's been a, a fantastic journey and I've, you know, I've absolutely loved it. Yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, can you tell us a little bit about Game Art Foundations? Tell us about the course. Um, so, uh, and I'll, I'll try, I won't make it particularly specific right now, but um, so, through the course, you'll learn basically, um, so it's an introductory course, so you, you um, learn everything from scratch. And we go through uh, creating 3D models, uh, creating uh, characters or character, and then uh, and then we actually go on into using a, uh, a game engine and um, learning to create a level through that. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. And I guess what software do you use um, in this course as well? Um, so the two big uh, pieces of software we use are called Maya. It's a 3D um, uh, modeling program. And we, uh, so that's what you'll get to use first. Um, after that, we also use the, the game engine we uh, learn to use. It's called the Unreal Engine. Uh, yeah, and uh, we also use some art uh, programs as well. So uh, we use one called uh, Critter. 
Uh, it's a free open source software, so it's uh, fantastic to use. You know, uh, people at home can download it quite easily. Um, but we do also offer others. So if if the student already has a Photoshop account, um, like an Adobe account, uh, they can use Photoshop as well. And uh, same with one called Procreate, or uh, I think there's one called Photop. I've seen being people being used. Yeah. All right, cool. So mm. um, aside from the one that you were talking that was free to download, um, are there any others that are free to download um, that you would recommend for students that might be thinking about the course? Um, so there's there's one called uh, Blender. Uh, that's a uh, that's an also a 3D uh, modeling program. Um, it's not quite as advanced as Maya, uh, the one that we use. But it is becoming used more in the gaming industry. So you know, once you know students get into their careers, a lot of studios are now using Blender because it's free. Um, yes, uh, Unreal Engine is also free. Yeah, that can just be downloaded off the Epic Games um, website. Um, yeah, so using those two programs um, will get you know beforehand will you know make you a lot more advanced in the course starting off straight away yeah yeah perfect and just while um we've got it running there mm -hmm. um i will just mention that up on the screen we do um have some of the artworks that have come out of um mm -hmm. the game art foundations or the set three in screen and media um so for those watching along um now with yeah. um i guess students watching and wanting to i guess get started on their journey or even thinking about coming to aie would they be needing to use a uh, Microsoft PC or a Mac? Um, we do use PCs here. Um, all these art programs do tend to work better on PCs. They're more designed for PCs. So it's always best to have one at home if you wanted to also learn, you know, yeah, learn perfect. how to use the software. Yeah. And um, the specs actually are on our website as well that you would need um, for a PC. If anyone's worried mm -hmm. about doing it at home, that they might not have the PC, we do have some specs listed on our website as well, which is nice. Yeah. And they can also call reception if needed as well. But that's always available yeah. or email us. Mm. Yeah, perfect. Um, can you tell us a bit about the major assignments for the course as well? Um, yeah, yeah, no worries. So I can, t I can dig a little bit deeper here. So uh, the course uh, starts, uh, the first assessment you do is is for uh, workplace health and safety. So unfortunately, we don't get into the gaming straight away. We do have to go through a little course first, or a little subject first. But, um, you know, the students get through that in a week or two. So then, then, the, then the real fun begins. Um, so your first major assessment when it comes to actual games um that is um we we get you to create a storage container so that's on uh on maya so what you're learning in that course is the fundamentals of creating the model how to manipulate the shapes um but you also learn about animation and in in that course as well so those that's the two big ones it's the fundamentals of modeling and then also learning how to animate an, an, animate your model Yes, it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun in that course, and, and they, yeah. they learn they learn a lot straight away. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so next after that comes uh, character design. So that one uh, involves you making a character. So this is where uh, it's a bit more of advanced um, modeling, because um, you'll be making much more, um, you know, a lot more precise shapes uh, for the different parts of the body of the character. Um, and in that too, you'd also, as well as well as the last course, you'd also learn how to um, texture the uh, models as well. And you also learn how to rig the model, so uh, how to set up a skeleton for the model, so you know it can move naturally. Yeah. So and do the students, that. I guess, get um, freedom of what they can design? Like if they've had a character in their mind for years and years and they just want to create it, can they do that? Or is there certain I mean, parameters? I, 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 absolutely. Uh, there, there are parameters uh, to a certain degree. Um, but if you have something that has been, like you say, has been on your mind for years, uh, we do sort of bend those parameters a little bit to let you uh, create what you've what you've always imagined, you know. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Mm. And they actually get to make a game as well. Do they come up with the concept for the game as well? Yeah. Yes. So the uh, 
So what I've covered just then is the first semester, so the first uh, five, six months of the course. Um, and then once they come back from a holiday after that, for the second semester, uh, that's when the whole level kicks in. So the level itself is split into three assessments. Um, and the first assessment of that is uh, the concepting of the level. So it's coming up with everything that you want to put into the level and that, you know, um, describing the level, describing what you want in the level, um, you know, uh, drawing it, um, drawing it, concepting it. Um, yeah, so those sort of things. So, um, and then, so once you've concepted it, it, you then come into the actual production of the level. So that's the next subject done. And that one is literally uh, coming onto Unreal and building building everything in the level, essentially. Um, you know, that's uh, that's the biggest part of the year. This is the biggest assessment. Uh, but it's also, you know, like the other assessments, it is a lot of fun to create. To let your imagination flow um, is fantastic in that sense. And, you know, um, yeah, so it, it's a lot of fun, the, the level creation, the level building. Um, and then finally, once you've built your level, uh, you get to add the functions of the level. So you get to, you know, add, oh, this is how the player opens the door. This is how the player picks up this item. You know, there, there's so many uh, functions available. Um, I would know I had to create, uh, I've created about 30 tutorials to show people how to do things. Um, so there's definitely, there's, and that doesn't even crack, you know, a percent of what you can do in Unreal Engine. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Um, I know when I quite often go out to schools and whatnot, um, and there'll be some really artsy people that are interested in the course, but uh, they think of making a game as programming. Um, yeah. I guess, is there programming that is involved with this course? Um, not exactly in the traditional sense, um, you know, you, you won't be writing any code. Um, I mentioned just before the, um, the tutorials that I created. So the last subject is essentially the programming subject, but it's not programming in, in any sort of traditional sense. Um, Unreal Engine has what's called blueprints. Um, and it's literally just taking things and fitting them together. So it's, there's no like code typing at all. Um, and, you know, because we aren't uh, programmers, we're artists, um, what my tutorials do is basically just show you from start to finish, you know, exactly how to do it. Um, we're not, yeah, we're not expecting the students to, for that sense, to work it out for themselves, which is always handy, you know, because, yeah. yes, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Um, so. Um, I guess it's kind of given to them how to make their game mm, work, isn't it? Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So if you're not good at those mass physics subjects, you don't have this to do is the, this course this, in particular. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is the course for you. If you're if you're a creative, and don't think mathematically or logically, you know, this is the exact course that you. If you're interested in games, this exact course for you. Yeah, of course. Well, that leads me, I guess, kind of to my next question. Um, yeah. What um, types of students would this course be ideally suited for? And I guess also, what do you see coming through um, for your own students as well that are really thriving? Um, um, you definitely yeah. have to. You definitely have to be a creative. You have to be into art. You have. I think you, you have to be into games as well, because um, this is this is not traditional art um, in the sense of that. You, you know, you definitely have to have the interest in games as well. Um, and, you know, already thinking of, you know, how graphics look, how, you know, in games, that's always an advantage. But, you know, obviously it will come natural to people who, who are gamers. Um, yeah, but yeah, this course is definitely for the creative types. Um, you know, it's, yeah, I wouldn't say it's, um, if, if you're more, yeah, more ma mathematical, more logical, you know, programming is definitely the way forward. Um, but yeah, so the, the artsy types, this is for you. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Um, I get a lot of students as well, I guess, questioning or worried about um, if they're really good at 2D art, but they've never actually tried 3D art. 
um, mm. and they get worried that it's something that they haven't tried that they might not be good at. Um, do you necessarily have to be good at 2D art to be able to do 3D? Um, do you think it's um, a bonus as well or not necessarily? I think, yeah, I think it's definitely an advantage, um, but it's not necessary whatsoever. You know, this is a, um, a, a intro course. Uh, even though we do say this uh, works well for the creatives and the arty, artsy students, um, that doesn't necessarily, you know, there's so many forms of art. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be good at drawing um, to be able to do this course, um, you know, as in like 2D. Um, a lot of the students who thrive in the 3D modeling environment um, can't, I, I don't want to say can't draw particularly well, but they, they're aware that they don't have a lot of skill in uh, drawing. Uh, we do also cover um, uh, drawing and give give a lot of tips out um, in our resources and uh, while teaching. So you know, there's there's always ways there's ways to improve uh, as well yeah, uh, throughout right. the course. Yeah. So you don't even necessarily have to be a good two D artist. You just have to have some kind of creative personality. No, you just have to have a creative personality. Um. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, what uh, makes a good, um, sorry, to be good, at, what makes a good 3D animation in your eyes? I think uh, there's definitely, there's there's opposite ends of the scale. So um, a lot of animation can be really cartoony and that's uh, super over the top and, you know, exaggerated movements everywhere. Um, but then there's also the opposite end of the scale, which is if you're if you're making something really if you if your model looks really realistic, and that's the vibe you're going for for the whole model, then we'll be looking for really natural um, animations. So, for example, say you have um, you know, taking from the storage containers, so you have um, you know your lid opening. So if it's if you got a big if you got a a storage container that's a chest and it's really heavy looking like a treasure chest, you'd expect the um, the lid to open slowly on the top and then it would oh sorry I get the camera and then it would wiggle a bit and then it would come down heavy you know, so it slam down and it would have a little bump you know um, but you'd also expect that to affect the base you know the base would wobble a little bit because of the heaviness. Now, if you had a treasure chest that was completely cartoony looking, you would have these really over exaggerated movements in the base before, you know, before the um, lid then flings open and then it would come crashing back down again. And you'd have all these over exaggerated uh, movements again. Yeah. So um, there's definitely there's between the two general ones, there's a massive gap in between them. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So um, I guess almost is it beneficial, do you think, to, I guess, actually, if you have like a chest or something like that, to actually mm. do it and watch what, if you're looking for that realistic, to actually, I guess, look at what you're making um, to be able to make Absolutely, the animations yes. with it. Mm, yeah, so um, we do get the students to um, look up a lot of references throughout the course. Um, it's always important to reference other, other works to get an idea of what you want to get. And it's always for inspiration. Obviously, we don't allow you know the, any copying. Um, yes, but um, so yeah, so we we get the students to look up a load of animations before uh, you know what takes you know and talk about what what they're inspired by there, and it and it helps a lot for them when they actually get to creating their own animations. And I guess that's three D animation. Um, what makes a good three D piece of art? Then do you think? I think it's definitely something similar. So looking at these ones, you know, there it does split into the same sort of two camps. You have um, over the top, you have over the top cartoony, like you'd find in more sort of uh, kids themed games or Nintendo games, things like that. But then you have the ultra realistic, like you would find in games like shooters, like Call of Duty and Elden Ring and things like that. Yep. Obviously, you know, even with the genres uh, mentioning Elden Ring there, so Elden Ring is obviously a, a fantasy game, but it's also very realistic looking. It's what you expect it to look like in real life. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's, yeah, same two camps as animation, really. 
they they get they flow together <laughs> you know pretty well yeah no fair enough mm. so th this um, one here from Jocelyn Frank this is yeah. a very cartoony looking pumpkin so this that was actually her storage container yeah yeah it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It was one of a, it was a really good one. Um, mm. I love the animation as well. It's almost like a bounce. Mm. So this uh, this one here from Thomas Huckle. This was a character that was you know obviously um, the situation we talked about earlier where they had something in their head but it doesn't fit the parameters, but we let them make it anyway because it looks fantastic. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it's awesome. It's awesome. Mm. And to be able to, I guess, create that um, kind of level, um, especially mm. while they're in school, like just imagine yeah. how good these people are going to be um, exactly. if they go exactly. on to tertiary education as well. Mm. Um, what would be some advice that you would give for um, some potential students that are wanting to get into 3D animation or art? Um, I, th I think if you're if you have a keen interest and say you're not quite ready for our courses, um, so our courses start from year ten onwards um, for the set twos and I believe year eleven for set threes. Um, that uh, you know we do offer you know we offer a lot of other things that you can do beforehand. Uh, so each school holidays we have holiday courses in our tour programming. And these are tiny little snippets, so they're they're the intros of the intros, you could say, on uh, on some art that you can create. So you know, you it, it, in those holiday courses, you'd learn a lot, uh, or you'd learn um, about you know, three D model creation. So you get um, you get a glimpse of that, you know, over the course of a, of a couple of days, and you know, they're really really handy. Um, and we also um, offer work experience as well each school holiday, and these again. Uh, those are um, show you all three aspects of the, the game um, of the game creation, so game art, game design, and programming. So you get a little taster of all of it. Um, other than that, um, I would say just have some fun at home with tutorials. Um, YouTube has a million tutorials that you can go through. Um, I'm sure other websites do as well. <laughs> But uh, there's software um, like Blender, which 3D modeling program, which is free, um, and Unreal Engine is free. So you know, ha having you know them on your computer at home, and just uh, playing with them and working out you know how to do things. These are all you know advantageous things to do if you're interested in in this um, you know in game creation. And, you know, and yeah, you get to, uh, you know, also really decide if it is something that you do enjoy, which is, you know, also beneficial, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Have a little taster. Um, I will mention mm. as well that those holiday courses and the beginner courses, um, they are from ages 12 and up. Um, so they are yes. for a little bit younger if they do want to, um, I guess, get a taste um, and see what AIA is all about. They are offered um, online and on all of our campuses as well. So um, that is also handy. Um, that is all um, the questions I have for you about um, game art, Paul. Thanks so much for joining us. I'll hand back over That's to Matt right. to, I guess, um, summarize and give us an idea about um, some subsidies for our CERT courses and whatnot. Yes, hello again. Um, so yeah, so if anyone out there is thinking of studying uh, the CERT three screen of media or any one of our other cert certificates um, in high school, please, please, please check in with your VET coordinator or your careers advisor. If you don't know who either of those are, start with your teacher, work your way up. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different reasons to why that is. Um, different uh, AIE, I think we, oh, close to 50, 60, 70 schools and maybe even 100 uh, around Australia, we actually deliver courses at. So during the daytime, during weekdays, um, the school will have a trainer there and they deliver one of our certificates at that school. So potentially your school already delivers the Game Art Foundations course or another one of our certificates. So please do check in with your careers advisor vet coordinator. Um, also, they're the ones to kind of behind the scenes pair it with your um, high school credits so that you earn those credits as well. Um, 
the other reason is that each state has different subsidies around different courses. So uh, a really awesome part about AIE is that a fair few of our areas are actually deemed high demand. Uh, art is one of them, uh, programming is another one. So when there are high demand areas, um, government can essentially help subsidize courses because we need more people in those areas, uh, more skilled workers in those areas. So do check in um, with your teachers. Uh, the other big recommendation is check in with your local campus, your local AIE campus, because not every school uh, is going to know all the different types of subsidies. Uh, whereas AIE, if you speak to us, we will know, or each campus will know what subsidies they have offered because it does change state to state. So reach out to your local AIE campus. We've got one in Adelaide, Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra, and we've also got an online campus as well. Um, and check in with them because some of these courses, they can get really heavily reduced down um, in cost. So one of the subsidies here in South Australia, um, you can get the cost of the course, it's a one tenth of the price, which is insane. So you're paying one tenth of the full certificate three, which is actually the one that Paul teaches. So it is. Martin. <laughs> um, yeah. So yes, check in with your check in with your schools, check in with your local AIE campus. Um, and if you're not ready to commit to the certificate courses, Paul and Alyssa did also mention we've got those smaller bite-sized um, courses. So once again, check in uh, with AI Campus for those when they're running or our website. And I think that's where I'm going to go and jump onto our website now, if that's okay with you, Alyssa. Yeah. Oh, here we go. I need to actually bring it up, so bear with me two seconds. Is there any other questions you had for, for Paul while I just quickly get our website up? Oh, good one. Um... Personal questions. Personal questions. I hope not. Um, <laughs> tell, us about, tell us about your podcast, Paul. Um, okay, so my podcast was, um, so I'm a big fan of comedy, especially in movies. Uh, so my podcast was centered around taking random ideas uh, for a the three parts of a movie. So a setup, a conflict and a resolution. Uh, so we pick ideas out of a hat and we'll just try and make them fit together. And, you know, hilarity ensues when you're trying to work that out <laughs> and coming up with dialogue on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, before Alyssa pokes and prods more into your, <laughs> your podcast, <laughs> uh, I'll save you by the bell here. So I'll bring up our website now. <laughs> um, so for anyone who is interested, um, the AIA website has a, an abundance of resources for you uh, to go on and have a look at. So let's just quickly jump through this. So courses here, if you go down to introductory courses, these here are our certificate twos and certificate threes. Um, for anyone listening tonight that um, is I guess I'm interested in a lot of different areas. Note that it's not just art we offer, we also do offer programming, we offer game design. Um, we've even got like a podcasting uh, foundations course or certificate, which is awesome. Um, and we have a brand new filmmaking certificate starting next year. So I do know that that has been quite popular on the uptake right now, um, but filmmaking is a fantastic career pathway. So for anyone who is interested in programming, game design, uh, art and animation, whether it be for film or for game, podcasting <laughs> or filmmaking, <laughs> we've got uh, options for you. Uh, the beginner courses and holiday courses we talked about, these are on the website once again here. Um, we do also have uh, our tertiary education. So if any year 12s are listening at the moment, and you're almost finished with high school, um, by all means, if you're ready for the industry and you love art and animation uh, or 3D animation visual effects, um, AI, we're a tertiary educator, so two-year courses with us here, um, and you are industry ready. Uh, the other awesome part about our certificate courses is to get into our career courses, we don't have a high school score requirement, um, and we don't have prerequisites or presumed knowledge. We have a portfolio interview. Um, so if you do a certificate course with us um, or with Paul, uh, you will have your portfolio ready to ready to go for that interview. So. A lot of the time, as students come through, do a certificate course with us, that's their portfolio, and then come through and do a career course. And then a few years later, they're working in industry. So that's the courses there. Um, if you go to our showcase page, um, there's lots of different uh, tabs here that we'll, um, we'll not go into all of them, but this one here, events. So we do have Industry Experience Day coming up uh, on October 5th. So that's where we actually bring some students onto campus. We get them hands-on with some of the software. So it's not just looking, um, but it's actually being interactive. So you're on the computers and you're gonna be learning a little bit uh, in each discipline 
Uh, so programming, design, and 3D art and animation. Student information, uh, this is all on the website once again here, that interview that I just spoke of there, uh, vets, student loans, government funding, scholarships, work experience, uh, all of that's listed on here too. Uh, if you need to get in touch with the campus, the information's there, and of course, if you are ready, you can just hit the apply now button, hit introductory course, and fill in your information. But once again, before you do that, please just check in with your um, vet coordinator, careers advisor, or local AIE campus, because they can help as well. Awesome. Um, so uh, before we wrap up for tonight, I do have one question coming from a Certificate 3 student, myself. So believe it or not, everyone in the crowd, I actually am doing a Certificate 3 screen and media. Um, they laugh because uh, I have taken a while to get through it. That's been a little while, yeah. Yeah, uh, work's been busy, work's been busy, um, but I'm just about to start my uh, character assessment uh, this weekend. So, Paul, what's some advice you have uh, for my specific character assessment? Uh, make sure it's concepted well. Um, and who else? Um, I mean, you're going to learn a lot within the subject, so you'll learn how to rig the character, which is always fun. Um, yeah, just be as creative as possible, really. Of course, within the limits. <laughs> but uh, yeah, or think completely out of the box, it's up to you. Yeah, but make sure you uh, really think of uh, your character's description before um, before concepting it, because it will uh, it will really help. Awesome. All right, I'll, I'll note that and I'll um, make sure it gets done this weekend. Yeah. And everyone can tune back in when we interview Matt on how he went on his <laughs> yes. certificate three. Completed by the end of the and year. And present your work, I think. Yes. And when, present when, my work. When your yeah. children are grandparents, uh, that's when <laughs> <laughs> he'll be, be done. That's what I mean. Yeah. Mean, mean. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us tonight. Alyssa, did you have any final questions for Paul? No, that's it from me. Thank you very much, Paul. Cool. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Hope you had a really fun night and we will see you on our next live stream or at a campus soon. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Thanks.